Hey everyone, Andy here, and today I'm checking out the brand new Sony NX Cam Super 35. This is the FS100, is the code name of the camera, and it is a Super 35 millimeter size sensor compact cine camera. As you can see, it's a very small bodied camera, and very amazingly, it has the exact sensor that the F3 does. Now, we've been testing the Sony PMW F3 a lot on our blog, and it does it very, very sensitive, it is a very low noise, and it just does amazingly well overall, and it's great to see that they actually have that same sensor in this camera. Now, it has reduced functionality compared to an F3, but it still has so many great features. So, I'll go over the features a little bit, tell you a little bit about this camera. Now, you can get the camera with or without this 18 to 200 millimeter Sony E mount lens. This is a Sony lens, it's a zooming lens. Uh, and uh, the unique thing about this lens is it is available, able to be controlled by the camera's uh, focus and and iris uh, electronic control. Uh, it is a variable f-stop lens. It goes from 5.3 to 6.3 as you zoom in. Uh, but because you can use the, all, the, all the focus and iris controls on the camera, it really does have a lot of functionality, including just a, a quick uh, autofocus or a push focus. So I like that about it a lot. Uh, now, if you take that lens right off the camera, just like so, I'm gonna reveal the E-mount. So that's an E-mount lens, and this is the E-mount. It is a very shallow flange distance mount. Basically, it's a 18 millimeter flange depth mount from the front to the sensor. It's very shallow. And so you can put just about any different lens adapter on there. In fact, already existing out there today are Canon FD, Nikon, and, and even PL adapters, and I'm sure there'll be more in the future. So you can adapt just about any lens to this sensor, which is fantastic. Of course, there's a, a lot of ways to, to put lenses on here, but if you have the uh, Sony E, lenses, or if you have the alpha mount adapter, which is an alpha mount to E adapter, uh, you can actually control the lenses with these uh, different dials on the side here. So on the side here, I have uh, iris control, where I can turn on a push, I can push uh, iris, or I can actually control the iris with this wheel, or I can give a temporary on and off switch for the iris. Next to that, I have a focus control option, where I can turn on autofocus or manual focus. So just quickly to stop it there. Uh, and then I would have a push auto. So these will work with the Sony E-mount and those alpha lenses. So if you have an alpha lens, you can stick it on there with an adapter and you can control focus that way. Um, as you can see here next, up, up above it, I have a, uh, exp I have a uh, expanded focus button. Now this button will work with or without the Sony lenses. Basically, it's just a button you hit and the camera will jump in so you can get focus. It just zooms in. You can do, do that while recording and while not. You may have seen this before on other EX cameras. Um, so the body of the camera is sort of a box shaped. A lot of people said it kind of looks like a deck when you first pick it up. Uh, it's kind of box shaped with the sensor on the front of it, but it is very light and small. On the side here you have a whole bunch of different buttons and switches. Many of what you might expect to see in a video camera. Uh, the first, the top six buttons here are programmable user buttons. You can set them to, set them to do a variety of uh, different things, including bars, zebras, last clip playback, etc. Below that, I have uh, my uh, gain controls and my, and my white balance controls. Now, like on the uh, F3, the gain goes very high up to 18 dB, and you can get a very clean image at 18 dB. Very impressive there. Finally, I have a menu control on the side here, so I can get into the menus from the side. Going to the back of the camera, I have a variety of outputs and inputs. Uh, the HD outputs that this camera offers is, are HDMI, and component HD. No, S, no SDI in the camera, it's strictly an HDMI or component HD output. It does also have a composite SD. Now this HDMI output though is very unique in that it, it, the HDMI is actually a 1.4 spec so it supports up to 1080 60p output. So that brings us into question, if it does support that, what can the camera actually record? Well the camera has the ability to record uh, in in 1080 and 24, 30, or 60 frames per second. Uh, and then I can also move my 24 to 30 up to 60 in a variable frame rate mode. Come back around to the side of the camera, I have a little button that says S and Q. S and Q button lets me turn on the variable frame rate mode. It's gonna be slow or fast motion. But I can also just record directly in 1080, 1080 60p. Now that records on this little card slot here to SDHC cards or memory sticks. So I actually can just put that right there on the side and record many hours of, of footage in the AVC HD format. This camera records strictly in AVC HD 
or in, in SD modes it records in an MPEG-2 flavor as well. But the HD modes are ABC HD, uh, 24 megabits is the highest quality for 24, and then actually you can get up to 28 megabits when you record 1080 60p. So I can record in 60p in the camera, and I can also output 60p out HDMI. So it's very cool. Now from recording 24p, I can output HDMI and it will flag the frames uh, in, the, in the stream so that an external recorder can actually remove the 24p out of the 60, uh, 60 output of the HDMI. So they've done this to make it so, so that you could use an external recorder and record these different frames. Um, so they've also packed into the HDMI a timecode stream. This is very unique. They've hidden timecode in there so that again external recorders can pull timecode as well as the 24p out of there. So the idea here is that this HDMI output we could go to a recorder if you want it to, and you get a really high quality output to a different recorder stream. Now those recorders will be out around any B time, and so we should see a lot of changes in that world. Finally, I have a, um, an L-series battery back here. This is a uh, standard Sony L battery, the same as found in a, in a H, uh, HDV camera like the Z1 or the Z7, or even the other NX cams have that. And I even have another XLR input back here. So I have an XLR input here, and an XLR input here. So there are two XLR inputs in the camera. That's kind of weird positioning, but the front one comes to the side here, as you can see, that microphone right to there, and the back one is intended for an input. Uh, on the top here, coming on the top of the camera, I see this, I see this really high quality LCD screen. Now this is the, the same resolution as you might find in an EX1 camera, uh, but it's also a touch screen. It can actually control some things by touching this little screen, and it is pretty responsive actually. For playback, it's very handy. Below that, I have uh, playback controls and my audio settings for those two XLR inputs, so I can set my audio as I want it. Now, it doesn't have a built-in microphone anywhere on the camera, but it does ship with this uh, microphone, so very handy there. Uh, finally, on the, on the far side, I have a, uh, a hard drive mount. This is below this handle here is an actual little box here that can come on and off, and this is a hard drive that I can attach to the camera, so instead of recording to the SD cards or the memory sticks, I can record onto this hard drive. Now, uh, with this hard drive, I can get many, many gigs of data, which means I can record for many, many hours of footage. Now, at 24 megabits, I get about uh, four minutes per gigabyte. So you can imagine if you get a big hard drive here, you can go so, so long in terms of recording. Uh, in terms of accessories that come with the camera, as you can see here, I have a, uh, a, a handle piece that has a microphone on it. This handle piece can come off and just be a hot shoe at the top here, so I can totally strip that off if I want to. And on the handle piece, I have multiple mounting points for mounting different accessories. It also comes with this little handle that I can also take off, the side handle, or I can reposition it as I want to. The handle comes off uh, if I want, also make it smaller. And on the handle, I do have a start-stop button right here on the back, and that, that's controlled with a little cable that goes to a LAN port back here. So basically, the, this is an external start stop trigger thing that I can plug in or pl uh, unplug any time. So that's on the side there. Now, uh, the final accessory that they ship with the camera is a hood. This is a, a loop essentially, like uh, something you might see on an EX3. It'll attach to the camera and actually can flip up if I want to out of the way and I can uh, use it to get uh, daytime viewing or just close up viewing of that nice screen. So it's all together and the idea is sort of you hold it together and it's sort of like holding a Hasselblad uh, type a still camera and you look down at your, and you shoot sort of against your chest and it actually is pretty comfortable with the, with the lighter lens that way against your chest. So pretty impressed with actually the ergonomics in that way even though it is sort of a, a boxy camera in some ways. Now uh, finally uh, at the bottom I have tons of screw points. Basically I have the standard sort of Sony plate you might find in the X1 in terms of two quarter twenties. Then I have a bunch more 3 16 screw holes there even offset ones so I can attach this to just about anything. And I have even more holes up top here uh, for attaching accessories, along here, along there. Basically, they, they made it so you can mount just about anything to this camera. It's small and it's light, so it'll work in many situations. Well, that's it for now. Uh, this is a very exciting camera. It's amazing to see they brought that sensor into this camera and made it such a functional camera overall. The menus are very, uh, very deep. They have a lot of controls, picture profiles, gam various gamma modes, etc. So it's not weak in that way either. Um, so really excited to see that they've done that. Uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.